Quick Slants is presented by your local New England Honda dealers. Kendrick Bourne, Patriots wide receiver. And before we get any questions, I want to do an actual test. How are you feeling with the knee? Feeling great, man. You know, ah, this back, baby. Back. <laughs> He's all back. Moving around. All right. Feeling good. That is a you great know, See, that's great what a sign. smart free agent to be does. <laughs> yeah. Get on quick slants. Show how spry you are. Um, look, I, I, gotta feel, I don't want you to go anywhere. I feel Thank like you. you got unfinished business. Thank you. With this program. And do you feel the same way? I honestly do, man. Um, you know, I felt like we were in a rebuild. I mean, that's personally how I feel. Like, it was a rebuild three years that I was there. And I, and I loved being a part of that, setting the foundation. And uh, I think it's going to take off pretty soon. So I want to be a part of, of the takeoff, in a sense, man. And, and I'm excited for the, for the new chapter. So I would love to be a part of it, man. I definitely have unfinished business. So I was going to ask, next question I have on my little list over here, I can barely see, do you want to return? That is... Look, Henry's over here. It's you know, it's not totally. You, you can't be committing. Now, Henry's his agent. But would you prefer to come back to New England, even with the uncertainty that you're seeing? Absolutely, man. Um, the way they treated me last year. I mean, all my years. You know, they helped me grow tremendously in my life. Um, personally, uh, emotionally, everything, mentally, uh, as a football player, ultimately. And uh, I want to be back in that. You know, I was pushed to another level with the Patriots, man. And um, I think it's just different. It's an environment that works for me, that helps me become a better person, better player. So I would love to keep that going. You know, I was, I felt like I was becoming the best player that I've ever been in my career. I had a great year in 2021. I had a great three years there. So um, just, just going into um, the next year, you know, obviously I got hurt, but I definitely have unfinished business. I was playing great, so I want to go great. back and do that again. I mean, it's eight starts, 37 catches. You led the team. You led the team for about two more months after your injury wow. because the production just wasn't there this year. Wow. Now there's a ton of uncertainty on this team. What do you see from afar with the coaching switch? First, a legend is gone. Mm -hmm. um, I just see a, a new era. It's just, it's just new. I think uh, nothing wrong with ending something that was phenomenal. You know, Bill had a great tenor. It was just phenomenal. So I think it was just time for something new. And everything comes to an end. And I love Bill and I love everything he brought. But I think it just needed something new at, the, at this point. And I think that's what Gerard's going to bring. It's just a new energy. And, and uh, it's going to be great. So uh, I feel like I'm a glue guy for, for, for the receiver room. I, you know, I bring energy. I bring a charisma that that I feel like we needed and uh, everybody brings their own you know parts but I feel like I was a part of something that helped so just want to be a, a good part of the team never never want to be a cancer never want to be anything right. that I'm not supposed to be so just doing the right things how will Mayo do I mean you guys are similar he said yeah. this year we co-hosted the yeah, show yeah. for like three years <laughs> yeah so um, what will he I've bring? had a great relationship with Mayo uh, you know see him in there for three years um, he's always walked around the locker room with great energy with with a great attitude and um, I just love that that they that's the decision they made. So uh, I'm excited to see what he does. I think he's going to bring great energy. I think it's going to be a swag that we have to ourselves that, you know, I think been, hasn't been seen before in, in New England. I've only been there for three years. So, you know, I haven't seen before. I've seen the past, but we'll see. I think it's going to be different and, and new. Bill was very anti-swag. <laughs> he hated swag. He hated the notion of swag. <laughs> Somebody once mentioned swagger. This is like in the old 2000s. He said, what the hell is swag? What is swagger? <laughs> Forget about swagger. Forget about how confident you are. Do your stuff. Get ready for the game, and then you can have swagger. No one cares what you say. It's what you do. You know. Exactly, and that's how Bill is. It's, you know, that's the kind of coach he is. So I love him to death, and I think it works for some, and it doesn't work for some. So I think there needs to be a balance, and, and I think that's what Mayo is going to kind of do is bring a balance. There's a blank slate to this offense. I've gone through it, and the only guys under contract right now who you would say, hey, these are – and they're your teammates. So you don't have to agree. Mm -hmm. But there's Ramondre Stevenson, mm -hmm. there's David Andrews, mm -hmm. and Demario Douglas, all of whom I think would be highly coveted players mm -hmm. at this juncture and, and top 15 at their position. Yes. There's a blank slate on this offense to work with. How daunting is that? What should the Patriots offense be in 2024? Um, that we have to step it up. They have to we have to get to a point where we can match what the defense did You know need defense numbers top five I think or whatever it may be their top defense in the league. So 
it has to match. So whatever that looks like, um, certain players having to work harder, whoever it is, myself, anybody else, um, just coming in and, and getting the job done. So those players you name, named are great. And so everybody just pulling their weight, and I think that'll change. And the last question I have is there's no quarterback specifically. What would you do a quarterback? I know you're a big Mac Jones guy. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you first on Mac. Why isn't he a good player anymore? Um, I love Mac. I think um, it's just circumstances. I think, you know, the pressure, first rounder and, and certain things around him uh, didn't just gel. It just didn't gel. It didn't glue for him. So it was it was hard. You know, it gets hard. I, I've, I've experienced my struggles um, coming into the league. I was undrafted, but it's hard when you're trying to um, reach expectations and you feel like you can't reach them. So you kind of get down on yourself sometimes. So I think it just kind of got overwhelming. I think he's the same player. I think it just has to be pulled out of him in a certain way. And, and I think he can do it. So can he do we'll it see. here? I, I think mean, he's I think he can do it here. I, and you know, the fans are going to be like, no, no, <laughs> no, you know no, no, the year of it. No, 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 we don't you know they are. Again. But, but and that's a hard situation to be in as a quarterback. It is. And you know exactly. And you know, the fans don't know him personally and, and I do and, and I and I love the, the person he is. So he has it in him. He has it in him and I think he just has to work for it. Always working. Everybody has to work hard. You know what I'm saying? You have to earn it. And um, we, we all have those times where it gets hard and you might you might lack, but how do you fix that? How do you learn from your down year? Or how do you learn from what your mistakes were? So I think he can do it, man. I hope he can do it. I would love to be playing with him again. You ever watch college football? I mean, you got you got to. You play him. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know so you, you're probably pretty up to date on the three quarterbacks. Yeah. Who's the best quarterback in this draft? Is it Caleb Williams? Is it Drake May? Is it Jaden Daniels? I like Jaden Daniels. So I'm Jaden Daniels fan. Um, Heisman Trophy winner, obviously. I love the, the play, how he plays, being able to be versatile. So I think that'll be a strong suit for us. Just, just trade in down. my opinion. See, I keep saying trade down. <laughs> trade down ad. Don't do it. Ah, don't do it. Fair enough. <laughs> I put him on the spot enough here. Uh, Kendrick Bourne, best of luck in a month. Thank you. I think sh things will go great, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in July. Yes, sir. Hopefully, man. All Thank right. you guys for having Take me. Care. Appreciate it, bro. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to do me a favor. Catch a new edition of the next Pats podcast. Phil Perry, he's talking Patriots draft strategy when it comes to rebuilding the roster. You can scan the QR code. You see it right there on your screen. Or you can find it on your favorite podcasting app or on YouTube. Little glitch at the top of the show, but we will be back with you with more from Las Vegas after the break. What's up, everybody? We are live from the Super Bowl here in Las Vegas, and we got growth potential for you. Growth potential is brought to you by Dr. Matthew Lepresti. Look younger, feel younger, get your hair back with Leonard Hair Transplant Associates. We just heard from Kendrick Bourne. Here's some of the numbers from Kendwick. Kendwick. For eight weeks, he was the lone bright spot of wide out. Here's what he's done in 41 games here. Believe it or not, he only started 12 of those, 127 catches, 1,640 yards, 12.9 average, 10 touchdowns. He'll be 29 when next season begins. So there's a lot to work with if you could bring him back at least. But it's now time for Quick Fire, presented by your local New England Honda dealers. And the Patriots have now hired an offensive coordinator. His name is Alex Van Pelt. He's 53 years old. He has been with the Cleveland Browns, Buffalo Bills, assorted other locations and the Green Bay Packers as well. Over the top, New York Giants former head coach is Ben McAdoo. Let's hit it for quick fire. Phil, welcome. Thank you. The McAdoo Van Pelt brain trust. Do you trust in these brains? <laughs> uh, I think we'll see is the only answer I can come up with right now because even though I know people in Cleveland love Alex Van Pelt and they love specifically the work that he did with quarterbacks. He is still a relative unknown when it comes to game days, which is a pretty key portion of the operation when it comes to stacking play calls and adjusting in real time and managing with your emotions on the sidelines. And then as far as Ben McAdoo is concerned, I, I do like this hire in that, Tom, he has a variety of different experiences, coaching a variety of different positions, and we know they simply need more brain power on that side of the ball when it comes to their coaching staff. And I think he could be, in some ways, offensive spackle, if you will. It's interesting. I think people are going to look at this, and rightfully so, and say, oh, my God, what was the plan here? Well, there was no plan necessarily in that. They didn't expect to be doing that this year. 
four and thirteen, and Bill staring in under the rebuild. They didn't want to do that, so they've moved on. Are they flying by the seat of their pants? Ooh, just a little bit, just a little bit. Anyway, what are they going to do in the draft? Thomas Dimitrov joined us. Here's Thomas Dimitrov, former Falcons executive and Patriots executive, on what the Patriots should do at number three. Look, I love it. If you love your guy, you got to go for him. And then you have to be very smart in how you're putting your team together. If you have the right GM, and they're not just about getting one or two players here and there, but they have a really good insight of how they're going to build their team and have, have the foresight to say, in the next two or three years, we're going to do it this way, then I think you can pick the quarterback. All right, Phil, got to do it. That's what he's saying. He's speaking your language. We are aligned. The great football mind, Thomas Dimitrov, and me, the guy who knows very little about the sport. But we do happen to agree on this one particular topic. I just think, Tom, you have so few opportunities excuse me, to run into a face-of-the-franchise type of quarterback that if you don't jump at the chance now, and I like the guys that are at the top of the draft. If they don't love them, don't do it. But I like these guys, and if you pass on them now, you don't know when that opportunity is going to come again. So I know the roster's not ready for him, but ready or not, you got to take your passer. You can always create the opportunity. Check this out. This is Eric Eager. He also works at Sumer Sports along with Dimitrov. That's where he's working now. He's speaking my language at the quarterback position. Eric. Unless they can go up and get Williams, go up and get May, I just don't think that it's a good gamble for them. And so I think moving back and you know you could end up with a player like Bo Nix. You can end up with a player like Michael Penix. Michael Penix by the way under 10 percent of his pressures as a college quarterback turned into sacks. So that's a guy with quick processing uh, and, and could do that even in an offense where you're kind of building up the line or something like that. So I would prescribe a trade a trade back because there are going to be a lot of teams in a down year offensively in the NFL that are going to be desperate for a quarterback. It's All right, get out of here with that. That's what my friend Eric Eager is saying, and he's blessed with some really insightful opinions here. You move down, you trade down. If you don't like those guys, you trade down. And you know what? Even if you do like them, it might be wrong place, wrong time for the Patriots to take the quarterback. Listen, I think we agree on this. If you don't think the guy is the guy, then don't take him. But I'm perfectly happy with following, for instance, the Bengals' blueprint, which was you had a bad team, you had the opportunity to draft a great quarterback, you drafted him understanding that you were bad, and it didn't matter because eventually that guy came into his own. You were able to build around him. And now, listen, he's been banged up. We know that. But when healthy, they're going to be in the Super Bowl conversation every single year. Good deal. Uh, as you can see, the Cam Newton show set is uh, under construction. Uh, meanwhile, here's Jacoby Myers talking uh, Mac Jones talk, as Kendrick did earlier on the show. Honestly, man, I, I, I really don't like it. And this isn't a knock to Zap because Zap is a dog, too. Like, I, I like my boy. I, I'm happy that he's doing well, too. But, man, how that went down with Mac, I kind of watched it all unfold for the last couple of years. And I feel like you could have seen it a couple of years ago and, and tell that it would end up bad. You know what I mean? Like, it, um, Yeah, man, I don't like some people out, but I think they had to meet him a little bit more because I know he's in the building working. I can't name too many people working harder than him, so. I hate to see it for him. I really do. Yeah, hate to see it. Any, listen, I'm going to keep doing this until he's gone. Any second thoughts at all on Mac Jones and his perhaps just can you can you get your brain around keeping Mac here? His viability as a quarterback for the New England Patriots. He's still under contract. You've seen Baker Mayfield do it. You know, you've seen Jacoby Brissett. They're going to go back out and think about Jacoby Brissett as, a, as an alternative. The Patriots released him. I would say the one argument in, that fa in favor of that point is the guys they just hired. They just hired Alex Van Pelt, who is coming from a West Coast-ish system in Cleveland. Ben McAdoo is a longtime West Coast offense guru coming from Green Bay and under Mike McCarthy. And who loved... Mac Jones, maybe more than anybody coming out of the draft in 2021, it was Kyle Shanahan. He wanted to draft him at three overall. That's a West Coast guy. So if these two coaches, Tom, that have seen a lot of different quarterbacks play and have a lot of success, if they come in and they look at Mac Jones and they look at his rookie year specifically and say, we know how to get him back to being that guy, then sure, give it a shot. But I'm not sure they're going to feel that way, Tom, because I don't know if anybody feels as though it can be salvaged in New England right now. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure either. And Jacoby Myers and Kendrick Bourne both voicing that a little bit. Uh, meanwhile, Mike Smith, former Atlanta Falcons uh, head coach, he knows a little bit about assembling a staff. 
and he knows about being a first-year head coach, obviously. Here is his advice to Gerard Mayo when it comes to assembling a staff. Michael. You need to make sure that you surround yourself with really, really smart coaches. I think that's what most head coaches make a mistake. Where they make a mistake is they don't surround themselves with coaches that are experts in their specific field. And I think that's the most important thing uh, that a first-year head coach needs to do and not try to do it all. It's very telling advice from Mike Smith because we are looking at a staff that doesn't have a lot of experience that isn't really big and again it's another instance where the Patriots are going to be swimming upstream what's interesting Tom just a little bit is that it's the offensive side of the ball right that we would look at the coaching staff and say Ooh, what's going on there and oh my god the roster on that side of the ball specifically needs a complete overhaul well now the coaching staff on that side of the ball might have more experience than the defensive side of things in New England when you look at Van Pelt and McAdoo, a guy who's in his 50s and a guy who's in his mid-40s and have had a lot of experience in the NFL. And then you look at the defensive side and you have a first-time defensive coordinator. You don't yet have a linebackers coach. And you just lost your play caller over the last several years with Steve Belichick going out to the University of Washington. We never talk about the defense. And I think rightfully so in a lot of cases because they've been so good over the course of the last several years. But they might have some things to figure out on that side of the ball when it comes to the staff. There is a lot to figure out for the team, and one of the main things to figure out is what are they going to do at number three? I opened it up to you folks with a from the stands poll question, and I asked buckets. At number three, the Patriots are in look, looking for a full rebuild. My question was, should you move down? And if uh, I suggested that was the right thing to do, 14.6 said that is absolutely correct. That doesn't sound like a high number. <laughs> uh, others said I lean this way. <laughs> and then the winning percentage was 40.6, saying, now nah, they got to go quarterback. And then, oh, 20% wondered if I'm eating paint chips. That's what I voted, the paint chips one. Yeah, I don't blame you. Um, to me, we're looking at a situation that we are going to pummel into the ground, into sand over the next few months. But the most important checkpoint comes in about a month, and that's free agency. It is, and that's where you're going to address some of your most pressing needs, you would hope, with immediate starting caliber players. So whether that's at offensive tackle, maybe assign a Jonah Williams out of Cincinnati, or it's at receiver, Calvin Ridley, Tom, that's what you have to do first. Then you attack the draft based on what you did in free agent. All right. Meanwhile, we're going to talk a little bit about the GM opportunity. Is this the ideal place for a GM if the Patriots are looking to add one? Come back after the break and join us. Find out. This is Mike Boganzi, Chiefs Assistant General Manager. He had this to say when Phil tracked him down and asked him if the Patriots' GM job would be desirable. Mike Boganzi's done an excellent job out in Kansas City. He said, that's a dream job. You get to go in there and kind of shape your own vision and what you want the organization to look like, what you want your players to look like. That's a dream job for a personnel guy to go in there in a clean slate and try to restore the history and the championship-level football they had there in New England. Mike, of course, is from Everett. Phil, it's really insightful because we still don't know exactly what the Patriots marching orders will be as GM. We don't. Robert Kraft at Gerard Mayo's introductory presser suggested that they wanted to hire from within and that they would appoint someone to make roster decisions when the time came. But he also said they might interview external candidates. Borgonzi certainly qualified. There are others as well, Tom. I think they need more brain power infused to that front office, don't you? 100%. And it'll be interesting to see what direction they go after the draft and who sticks around. All right. Appreciate you guys enjoy, uh, joining us, and I hope you enjoyed the program. Coming up next, early edition.